Well, hi, stamping friends. It's Jackie Ballheis from Comp and Stampers. I've got some super fun summary cards to share with you today. Here's a little peek at what we're going to be making. Um, we're using the Slice of Happiness stamp set. Now, I've been trying to diversify a little bit. I love flowers, and I tend to gravitate to all the flower stamps in the, in the catalog, but I've been really working hard to do fruit, and I've done some animals, some walruses, and we've got some zoo stuff coming and dinosaurs coming, and I'm trying to broaden my stamping to things other than flowers. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope you enjoy all the tips I have while I show you these cards. I have a ton of tips about scoring, about envelopes, about, let me grab something, why a spoon is one of the most important tools in your stamp room. And I don't know what else. We'll just see as we go along. These are the cards we're gonna look at and I'm gonna go ahead, flip this camera down and we're gonna get started. You know, as always, I have a ton of tips to share with you. These are the three cards, and we're gonna come back to these in a little bit and look at them closer. But as I made these, these, I realized I had a ton of stamping tips. Now, those of you that follow me know that I am all about keeping it simple. Quick and easy is the name of the game in my book. And even though these cards I think are beautiful, there's a lot going on here. They really were quick and simple. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of tips that will help you make really pretty cards quick and simple. Now, if you're new to following me, thank you and welcome to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, show me some love. What you guys do um, on YouTube to let me know that you like the videos lets me, you know, kind of helps me keep bringing them to you. So without further ado, I want to show you all the tips I have today. Now, I said in the intro, why is a spoon the most important thing in your stamp room? I'm gonna show you. The stamps that we're using are, I don't know if they've labeled these a distinctive image or not, I think they are, but they're very, very detailed. And when you use very, very detailed stamps, if your ink pads are too juicy, you're not gonna get a good image. And I'm gonna show you um, what I mean by that. So we're gonna ink up really good, and I don't know, this pad might be okay as it is, we'll see. You know, that one did pretty darn good. Let's try the pomegranates here. You know, when I wanna show you something that um, will help your stamp, you know what, and that one did pretty good too. I think the pomegranate looks like it has a little bit too much ink, but quite often when you stamp these really detailed images, you're not gonna see the detail and it's going to be obvious that there's way too much ink. So I just take the back side of a spoon and I push that ink out to the sides of the pad. So on this cherry cobbler one, we push it all out. And now let's see, let's clean the stamp off first so we can get a good impression here to show you what I mean. Just using my simple chamois, got it all wet. Oh, let's get the edges there. And let's set that aside. Then again, we're gonna ink up on the same pad. Let's get these going the same way. And look at how much more detail I picked up on that. It is lighter, but you've got a lot more of the detail. The same thing's gonna go with the grapes. Let's go back and do that one because I want you to, to really see this. Um, but again, anytime you have a stamp that's real detailed, has a lot of different shading going on in it. Um, I didn't wipe my spoon off, so we'll just use the other side. So we're gonna just push that gorgeous grape off to the side, then ink up, and let's see the difference this one makes. Look at that. Now it's a lot lighter again, but you can really see the detail in those grapes. So that's the first tip I'm gonna give you on today's cards. Now let's come back to the cards. I'm not gonna make the cards for you. I'm just gonna kinda talk about them a little bit. I used the thick whisper white on these. Anytime my card base, okay, and this is what we call a card base, is whisper white, I like to use the thick because the regular whisper white that we just stamped on here, it is a lighter weight. This is perfect for layering and stuff or even for a card base if you have a ton of layers. But otherwise, I like you know having a little bit more substantial of a card. So let me grab our Simply Scored. Whenever you're using the thick Whisper White, you really want to score that cardstock. It doesn't fold very, very nicely on its own. It kind of gets a little cracks and creases in it. And especially if you're going the 11 by four or four and a quarter piece of paper, I score anything that's 11 by four and a quarter, I make sure I score it first because it's paper's not meant to fold this way. It's meant to fold the other way. 
And then after I've scored it, you want to fold with the raised edge to the inside. And I know that seems backwards. I had a hard time remembering that. Oh, and I'm just using the bone folder to rub on there to get a super crisp fold. But the little ridge, the bumpy part goes on the inside and that's what's gonna give you a really nice fold on there. Now, let's talk about some texture. Now for the card here, on my card, and you can see I did this on all three of them. I really came up with one layout and did the same on all of them. You can see the Subtles embossing folder on there. I I don't know, I have this thing about plain layers. I think when I first made this card, it just seemed a little bit too plain to me, but by putting that Subtles embossing folder on there just added a nice teeny tiny little touch. Now let me grab my black pad here. Now, I told you I was going to have lots of tips. I'm not making the full card, but we have tons of tips. So make sure you watch all the way to the end so you don't miss anything. So the greeting I'm using here, wishing you health and happiness. I think that's the one I have. I might have a different one. Nope. Hope, you, hope your day is delightful. It doesn't matter. But I kind of had this thing about making sure my words are really nice and straight on a card. And especially when you're using the rubber stamps or the cling mount, it's a little harder to do to make sure everything's straight. So before we do that, let's go ahead and stick the cling label on this. Um, I have a horrible habit of not always putting labels. Let's find on my stamps and that comes from years of them not sticking very well so i'm trying to do it now but i've gotten so used to not knowing where it is it doesn't really bother me but what you want to do take your your sheet of labels here peel the backing off now these are super sticky you're not going to be able to reposition it so once you lay it down and i'm going to just take my stamp and carefully lay it right in the opening there press it down and there's our label now i have always you know tried to teach people and also maintain by myself don't count on the fact that this is going to be perfectly straight okay learn to know how your image is on the back there so what i do before i stamp an image is i will go ahead line my block up square on my grid paper and then i'm going to look at the back side here and use those lines underneath to put it on there and hope it's straight but then I always have to test it. So we're gonna ink it up. We're gonna stamp on the grid paper using the top of the block right along a line. And now you can see that looks pretty straight. So I feel good about stamping this. So we'll go ahead, ink it up again. And now when I stamp on my cardstock, I'm gonna line up this edge and this edge with the edge of the cardstock. If you want it up a little higher, just line up this edge. We know we're nice and square on the block. So let's stamp that there. Now, after I stamped it on my cards is when I did the texturing with the soft settles or the settles embossing folder. You don't want to emboss first because you're not going to get a good image. Now, the beauty of this folder is in this case, our card, you know, is folded this way. I want these, the lines in here going up and down. So all I have to do is stick this in here and I'm going to line up that folded edge with the edge of my embossing folder, and then it's ready to run through my Big Shot or whatever stamp um, die cutting and embossing machine you have. Now with some of the, let's see, I think I used this one, I did the other way, so I was able to put it in like this, coming out to the side. And again, line this up on the edge, but that way you can have those, um, those lines going in the direction you want them. So embossing tip, getting your stamps on straight tip. Now let's um, look at our cards again and see what other tips I can share with you. So gingham paper, do you guys love the gingham paper? I am so excited to have gingham paper in every single color that we carry in the in colors as well as the core colors. So all I did, it's pretty much a monochromatic card. I used a piece of gingham, the same color as the ink I used. I used the layering circle framelits on these. Um, I don't even know exactly what size they are because I stamped on scrap paper first and then I just picked the circle that fit it the tightest. Now, on these two, I used some of the Noble Peacock rhinestones. You know, don't get all hung up on those embellishments that they only go with a certain suite. I thought they matched here perfectly but I didn't really have an embellishment in Cherry Cobbler that I that I liked, or I guess that I even had. 
So what I did is I just used the frosted ones here and I used my Stampin' Blends. Now this you can do on any of the clear or white embellishments, the rhinestones, the pearls, and you can just use that Stampin' Blend, give it a second to dry and it will color these any color you want. How cool is that? So there's that. Let's take a peek at the inside and then I'm gonna show you a tip for the envelope. So I always like to coordinate things. So here is the stamp I took out of another stamp set. And right offhand, I can't remember the name of it, but that reminds me, hop on over to my website. I'll have a link down in the description of the video that will have pictures of these cards, as well as a complete list of all the supplies I used in the card recipe. I'll give you the measurements for everything, even though there's not a lot of measurements on these cards. But I just carry over a little piece of the designer series paper that gingham on the inside and I just have my little friend verse in there like so. Now you've heard me say before we never want to send boring naked envelopes so let me show you my envelopes. There's a green one. So first off I always like to stamp on them so here you can see where I stamped on each of the envelopes to coordinate with the card um, super simple. Okay, all these verses came from the same stamp set other than what I used on the inside. But then the fun part is putting gingham on the envelope flap. I love to do this to coordinate with my cards. So I want to show you a little tip. I just use our regular Whisper White envelopes. What I do is I open this up and we're going to take our liquid adhesive. Don't put too much on there. And just go ahead and get that out to those edges and right along the crease. I have a little bit too much, that one was coming out. And then I take a piece, I don't necessarily even cut it down ahead of time. I just make it sure it's big enough to fit the flap and I will put it on there and you can kind of feel when you push it right up to that fold on that envelope. Um, so when it folds, you don't have to fold this, but it'll just fold over. Give it some good pressure, let it dry for a second, and then all you have to do is flip it over. You know what, we can make this a little bit easier to cut that way. And then I'm just gonna take my snips. Guys, these are the best little scissors in the whole wide world. Um, if you don't have the Stampin' Up snips, put them on your next order. Um, they cut so nice, they're so nice and sharp, nice pointy tip, nice small cutting area. And there we go, there is our card envelope. So, like I said, I didn't make a card today because the cards are pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to share a ton of little stamping tips with you that apply not only to these cards, but to any cards that you make. So as always, if you have questions about anything I showed you, let me know. And if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be your demonstrator. Hop on over to the website. Let me know if you need a catalog. Leave me a comment here on YouTube. Let me know what you think of the projects. I love to hear from you guys, whether it's on my blog or on YouTube. So again, questions, let me know. Need a catalog, let me know. I'm here to help you with all your stamping needs. So until I stamp with you again, have a stamp happy day.